Welcome to the first episode. Actually, you know what? Cut the music. Let's just talk paddles. You know, there's tons of podcasts out there that are talking about all the news in pickleball, what's going on in the tournament scene. And as much as, you know, I, I actually listen to a lot of those podcasts, most of them, to be quite honest. But what I know best is paddles. So I wanted to do a series where, you know, we just talk about paddles, talk about everything that's going on in the space paddle wise specifically, and do just kind of this sort of organic, just discussion on what the meta is like in paddles and uh you know talk about some of these battles that i didn't have time to review um that really deserve uh, to be you know talked about or discussed or or why did i not get a chance to review them why did why did they not rise to the top in in certain ways you know so um so I have a, a big stack of paddles next to me that we're going to dive into. Um, but first thing, you know, I just want to say thanks to all of you. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am without any of you. And, uh, you know, when I see all the positive comments in, in my comment section, um, and, you know, I, I really do appreciate all of you. Um, it means the world to me that, you know, we're building this community that, uh, you know, my subscriber base is growing, um, you know, like and subscribe, shameless plug. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I really do. I, I appreciate each and every one of you uh, from the bottom of my heart. So um, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm very, very happy and grateful to be able to make videos and talk about paddles and just have a good time, you know? So, um, but yeah, let's start off with Selkirk. Um, so if you haven't heard in the space right now, Selkirk sent off an email that was just massive, talking about all the issues with how paddles are tested, uh, all the regulations in paddles, and definitely sort of uh, placing some attention in certain sectors of the paddle space, saying that there's definitely some love being given to maybe a certain company uh, and, uh, it's crazy. There's always some drama in the paddle space, you know, um, but it's sort of to be expected, I would say, with how young pickleball is in comparison to other sports, especially how young the tournament scene of pickleball or the regulated tournament scene of pickleball is. Right. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's wild. But so Selkirk, um, you know, they've been sending me a lot of their new paddles. We got the uh, the Halo, which is the, uh, the the Kevlar Halo, uh, which is going to be a Kevlar carbon fiber blend. Um, it's 14 millimeters. Um, good paddle. Uh, I was using it the other day. I used it when they first sent it to me, and and uh, you know it didn't it didn't totally wow me in any particular way. Um, it f doesn't feel I don't know. It doesn't have as much pop as most 14 millimeters do for me. And it has a pretty good sweet spot, but given how sort of wide the face is and how large the face is in comparison to how small the, the grip is for me, it didn't just didn't really stand out. Um, I was expecting more from this battle. I was actually really excited that Selkirk actually jumped onto the Kevlar bandwagon. Um, I was expecting with all their resources and everything that they have at their uh, disposal that they could really pump out something that would be sort of next level. And for me, it, it just fell a little short. Um, I, I it, It's a good paddle, it's not bad, um, but uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't worth putting all of the time and effort into making an entire review of. Um, you know, doing a full review of a paddle is, takes a long time. Uh, for all of us reviewers, you know, it takes a long time to get a full review out and really dive into all the metrics and analysis. And uh, when I pick up a paddle like that and I play with it, and I'm totally fine with setting it down. In fact, I kind of want to just set it down and pick up a paddle that I really love, you know, like a Honolulu J2K or the Mach 2 Forza or uh, even the Honolulu J3K or J7K. Those are some of my favorite paddles right now. And um, the... Yeah, when that the Selkirk Halo definitely was not uh, not super exciting for me. They sent me the Selkirk Amped Pro Airline as well, which is the Invicta and the Epic. Uh, they sent me both of these paddles. Um, I like these paddles; they're pretty good. Uh, 
solid for sure. I'm not the biggest fan of edgeless paddles personally. I do like uh, the edge guard. I think it adds stability. I think that it's, um, it works for my mind really well on, on slices and, and two-handed shots. Uh, my two-handed backhand tends, I don't know why, it's, it's, a, it's a mental thing for me, but they're saying that they put a layer of fiberglass on the outside of these paddles, which they're saying adds more durability to it. Um, I don't know if that's entirely, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't played with these enough to really tell. Um, but again, it was another, these were just a couple of paddles again, where I picked them up, played with them. Uh, they were nice. I, I wanted to get a review out because it's Selkirk and, you know, those videos would do well. But for me, it just it didn't do, uh, they weren't great for me, you know. So, um, yeah, so I just kind of put them back in my bag, kept trying to get footage of some play sessions with them. And I kept putting them back in my bag and just didn't feel super confident playing with them. And so... Um, you know, some other battles definitely moved up to the surface of my priority levels and, um, and they just got kind of pushed down. So, uh, as far as Selkirk goes, you know, I do, uh, I, I have some respect for them for that email that they sent out for sure. Definitely calling out certain parts of the paddle industry. Um, definitely, uh, really isolating some holes in the paddle industry right now um some issues which is nice but you know as john q said in his recent podcast you know we have to be weary though because selker could also have some hidden motives in in doing that it could be a pr thing it could be um you never know you know is is that for sure the case no um and the email did seem fairly sincere and you know when you're putting out an email like that and really putting people on blast it, it is a risk so we have to take that into consideration. Um, you know, if you're taking a risk to, to put somebody on blast, you're also taking a risk on what that will do to the perception of your company, right? Um, it was very well received from pretty much everybody in the paddle space. So um, yeah, but a lot going on with Selkirk right now. Uh, I would say drama wise, uh, but uh, not much going on paddle wise or innovation wise, which is always kind of a bummer for me because, you know, I just expect more from these larger companies, you know, like Selkirk. They have so many resources at their disposal, but they're not putting out products that are wowing me in any way. I was going to say wowing us, but I don't want to speak for you. But, you know, for me, it's just it doesn't these these paddles don't wow me. I don't pick them up and I'm like, oh man, this is amazing. This is, you know, a paddle that I would spend $250 on or $150 or $330 on, you know, it's like, no, I would pick up many paddles over those. So, and that's just the reality. So, uh, let's jump into the next ones. So we have the Groovin Laser 16X and the Laser 16S. These paddles are awesome. Uh, I really, really like these paddles. Um, I would probably give the edge to the 16X, uh, given that it's elongated. Um, these are Kevlar carbon fiber blended paddles, which is nice. Um, the 16X for me is definitely the standout. I do like the 16S as well. Um, you know, it just doesn't have quite as much pop or power as I would like for some of the uh, at the line aggression that I would like to have, but it does have really good control, which is nice. Um, the 16X for me is, it has that grooving plushness off the uh, the center of the face, which is nice. So uh, I've always noticed that with Groovin that they have a sort of plushness to their paddles that um, it's just, it's unique. It's different than other paddles. It, 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 it feels so nice when you hit it off the sweet spot of a Groovin paddle. Um, and I think the Kevlar actually accentuates that as well. Um, it has really good spin, uh, certainly top tier spin, good power, good pop. Um, you know, the grip feels really nice and solid. The whole structure, the organic feel, the integrity of these paddles feel really nice. Um, so this, the 16X um, was a standout for me for sure. I, I do really, really like this paddle. So um, I like both of them, but the 16X, was the standout for sure. We have this uh, Versix Vector paddle. So this paddle is pretty interesting. It 
It's a 15 millimeter paddle. It's thermoformed, feels really nice, solid all the way around. Um, it's a good price point. I think this one comes in at 135 before discount code. Um, and of course you can use STS Pickleball for essentially every single company in the space as uh, as a coupon code. But uh, yeah, it this bottle has some rigidity off the face. Um, really good pop, solid power. Um, I like the face shape. Again, just the integrity of the handle, the feeling of it feels very ultra premium. It doesn't feel cheap or tacky in any shape or form, which is nice. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, this is a solid paddle for a solid price. Um, so this was uh, kind of a standout, just given that it is a good price point. So uh, so I wanted to give a little shout out to this because I was playing some really good games with this paddle, and um, I like this paddle quite a bit, especially for the price. Next up, we have a paddle that I will not be unsleeving. This is the Neonic flare so i wanted to say shogun <laughs> because it's very similar to the shogun but this is the neonic flare so it is using a titanium weave just like the shogun from bread and butter um but in a more standard sort of wide body shape so this paddle is pretty freaking awesome i actually love this paddle um it has that really interesting plushness that kind of springy nature off the face um that soft springy nature off the face that that titanium weave gives um, but it has a massive sweet spot because of the shape of the paddle i'm not going to talk too too much about this one but uh, i'm i'm really enjoying this battle a lot um, i love when companies take new tech and fill gaps that haven't been filled with that particular new tech, right? So uh, Neonic took a more wide body shape and they slapped some titanium weave on it. And now we have a very unique paddle that has new tech on the face material with a shape that we haven't seen with that particular face material, which, you know, it's not a groundbreaking concept, right? But ultimately it does fill a gap in the marketplace and really makes it unique it's a differentiator and i think it's smart i think neonic's doing a great job here i think they jumped on that pretty quickly and they're doing a really good job next up are two paddles that i also will not be pulling out of the bubble wrap but uh, i have played extensively with these already and i do have plenty of footage with these but these are the rhombus ripple paddles so we have the r2 and the r1 already so um these paddles are great, super hot off the face. They have a sort of carbon rib structure similar to Gearbox. Um, the owner's going to be sending me a deck on that soon, which is essentially just a lot of R&D and information on what the internal structure looks like. So we'll be talking about that on the review of this paddle. So I will be doing a full review of the Neonic Flare and a full review of the uh, Ripple paddles coming up soon. So um, definitely stay tuned for those because these are some hot paddles. And then uh, last, I just wanted to talk about the Honolulu paddles. So uh, these are the J3Ks. So the J3K, um, initially when I first picked up the J3K, I thought it was good, I, but I was a little unsure. I didn't know if it was going to be just, um, I don't know. It, it didn't super, super wow me. Um, I picked these back up the other day and I didn't play too much with the J3K Pro when I first played with these paddles, um, but the J3K Pro wowed me the other day. The original J3K is solid. It's a great paddle, um, definitely more control oriented, um, but it didn't it didn't super wow me. I feel like um, it was it's just a solid paddle, um, but the J3K Pro uh, this is a solid paddle. I really, really like this one. Uh, really good spin. Uh, that tighter weave structure because of the pro. So uh, any any Honolulu paddle that says pro, they're using a tighter Kevlar weave structure on the face, which gives it more pop and essentially makes the face a little hotter off the face, right? So um, this particular paddle feels great because you get this more standard shape. You get um, that more pop, more power off the face, but you get the larger sweet spot of the standard shape as well. So that rigidity off the face with that tighter weave, that intense kind of pop and a little bit of extra power is really nice on this paddle. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to this one as well, because I've been using that one a lot as well. So 
And so lastly, let's just talk about the current meta in the pickleball paddle space. You know, I think it's fairly obvious right now that we're in a very intense power meta, right? So, you know, we have the Yola Gen 3s being banned for, um, you know, having insane spin, insane power, you know, core crushing with even more power. And then we have the mod TA, you know, and then they were banned, right? And then we have the mod TA 15 coming back out. It's, it's, it's the same experience. It's the same paddle with just slightly less spin. You know, the power off those paddles, those and the, and the gearbox paddles are just, it's insane. I mean, um, I agree with Chris Olson and John Q actually in their recent podcast that, you know, the TKO CX 12.7 millimeter really should be the cap on a power paddle. You know, I think that it shouldn't really get any more powerful than that. You know, I think that it makes the game much more fun to watch when you get longer back and forth in the rallies. And, um, you know, you see Deco Bar just ripping these laser serves. I mean, like bullets across the court. And um, it's crazy. You know, I think the state of pickleball right now is really interesting to see. Um, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if I would want to be in the pro scene right now. I think it would be fairly frustrating. Um, but yeah, so I think it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I think for me, uh, you know, I do like elongated battles. I, I like messing around with the power. I think it's fun. I think the Mod TA-15 is, is a fun paddle. But still right now, if I was to go to a tournament, you know, the, the Honolulu J2K 16 millimeter, uh, you know, being sort of an all core paddle, leaning control, I think that that's just an awesome paddle. I can just land drops, just, just floaty, nice little drops right over the net, just consistently. My resets are nice. My mid court, um, you know, my mid court plays are, are really solid and consistent with that paddle. You know, I can move up to the kitchen methodically with that paddle, which is nice. Um, you know, I like the, the J3K Pro, super solid battle. Um, that uh, Groovin Laser 16X is a great elongated battle, which I would consider all court um, slightly more powerful all court, but pretty much in the center of all court, um, just because it is a little more plush off the face. Love that. Um, not going to talk about how powerful or control oriented the neonic flare or the ripples are yet, um, but those are some pretty awesome paddles. Uh, so you'll definitely be getting a, re a full review of those. But uh, but yeah, I think I think the meta right now, of course, is just power. It's just how much freaking power can we get into the game, and and is that good for the game? you know, in my opinion, not so much. Um, I think it's really fun. Actually, one of my favorite things uh, in the last John Q podcast was when he was talking about how, you know, it, it, it decreases the creativity of the game, right? And it's totally true that you don't have... You don't have as much creativity in the shot choice when the ball is moving that freaking fast. You know, it's it's mostly just reflex. Um, and then if you can get away with hitting those shots that fast, then you're seeing more drives, more insane serves, more aggression, um, you know, from the midcourt and from the baseline. And then, you know, rallies are ending so quickly. And I don't know, I, I think it just doesn't make the game nearly as fun. So um, I really, really love controlling the ball, placing the ball, being creative, having fun, you know, not being worried that somebody's going to take my eye out or something. Um, you know, I've been using my carbon pivots, my uh, protective eyewear for months now. Um, I have taken an overhead right in the center of my right lens. Uh, thank goodness I had those on, which is super nice. But uh, yeah, it's it's crazy out there. So um, but that's it. Just wanted to have some fun, talk about some paddles, do something a little different and touch on some, some paddles that I, you know, haven't had time to review and touch on some upcoming paddles that, uh, are pretty exciting in the space. So hope you enjoyed as always have a freaking wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.